Hello and welcome back to Tech Day's 10 Minute IT Jams. Today we are profiling commerce tools, a headless enterprise commerce platform built on a modern architecture principle called Mark. Joining us today is Territory's Commerce Tools Territory Director Joshua Emblin and Sophie Stefanetti, Account Executive. Welcome Josh and Sophie. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so for an IT manager that hasn't worked with commerce tools before, can you provide an overview of the company? Absolutely. Commerce Tools is a unified commerce platform, and we set out with a mission and a vision to enable our customers to build out world-class commerce experiences. But we want them to be able to do that at a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost that it would take to go and do that themselves using in-house resources. <clears throat> The modern architecture comprises of the MARC principles, as you mentioned, which is microservices, API first, cloud native and headless, which brings that speed and agility to the development process and then continues on to deliver those world-class experiences that customers are building on top of the platform. Brilliant. Okay, so what makes Commerce Tools special from a product perspective? I'll answer that one. From a, from a modern form, it's really the modern form of architecture that enables teams to deliver the flexible and customizable experiences. So it really unifies all commerce channels. This means regardless of the customer is buying in store, via the web, via mobile, social, or even card dashboards in some cases, commerce tools can create a truly unified experience, removing friction from that buyer's journey. Okay, so what about from a corporate perspective? What makes Commerce Tools special? From a corporate perspective, we are quite unique in that the entire C-suite of Commerce Tools are technical uh, in their background, and they all see this as their second time around, having spent time with some of the bigger enterprise software players in the market, um, having worked with monolithic applications. They've all experienced the pain and they understand what brands and what businesses are looking for from a more modern composable architecture stack. What that then translates to our customers is being able to quickly leverage our platform to enable new revenue channels as they pop up and as they're um, evolving in the market. <clears throat> what that means is it keeps um, corporations ahead of the curve and they can quickly and easily deploy new experiences when their own C-suite demand that they bring these experiences to life. Excellent. So let's talk about the biggest developments in the last couple of years for Commerce Tools. The last few years have been incredibly exciting over at Commerce Tools. Uh, we took a large Series B investment uh, from one of our investment partners, which has fueled our global growth. We've grown from um, under 200 people to now be 300 people around the world, including establishing a team of now 10 people here in APAC. Last year was a very big year for us as an organization with the leading analysts in Forrester, Gartner and IDC, all naming Commerce Tools as a leader. So we are no longer that small challenger niche brand. We're now pushing up against the likes of Adobe and Salesforce on a global stage, which is incredibly exciting. Awesome. So let's talk about your journey from a startup to a grown up to a, to a unicorn. So I guess, what are the key takeaways from, from this journey? The key takeaways from this journey has been really educating the market on the benefits of being API first and the benefits of having a microservices backed architecture. Um, for too long, I guess for the last two decades uh, before commerce tools came into the market, monolithic applications were the only way that brands could trade online. And I think anyone who's been trading online uh, in recent times will understand the experience and the pain that comes with operating in that monolithic environment. So key takeaway has really been that disruption that we've created. Um, all of the analysts are now talking about composable architectures and what that means and the benefits that that brings to retailers and brands. And we are now seeing a slew of um, competitive platforms popping up, copying our architecture, uh, taking the same approach, uh, using the same messages in market. So we've really disrupted the enterprise commerce software space and really created our own new um, trend as it was. Okay, so let's broaden that out a bit and uh, talk about the e-commerce trends that you see happening here in ANZ. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, I think you know, a big trend is that headless is definitely here to stay. It is no longer a buzzword. 
Um, people in region have been talking about headless for the last two or three years. As we know from Commerce Tools experience, it's been around a lot longer in Europe and the US. ANZ has typically always been about five to 10 years behind Europe in terms of commerce trends. And people have always looked to the leaders in John Lewis and brands like Burberry. And oh, that's what we should be doing from a technical perspective, given that they've all gone down that headless path and they're all working within microservices environments. I think that trend is very much here to stay. And that's been accelerated by the global pandemic and changing um, customer expectations, what people are looking for from a brand, and really sort of enabling um, that convenience that we look for when we're all unfortunately stuck at home under lockdown. Things like contactless deliveries, contactless click and collect, um, being able to quickly and easily bring those experiences to market is key. And it's much easier to do that working in a headless microservices fashion, as opposed to the traditional monolithic architecture. Yeah, absolutely. Some very good takeaways there for, for commerce. So that concludes our 10-minute IT Jams with Commerce Tools, Josh Emblin and Sophie Stefanetti. Thank you both so much for talking to us today. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks for having us.